Carolina football has a two-game losing streak against NC State. That's unacceptable, and it's going to change tonight. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Saturday, November 25th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you so much for joining us to get your best Carolina content every day. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Hey, we're having great conversations all the time on the Locked On Tar Heels Discord. It's just a great community where you can take what we do here and move it into conversations through text. It's awesome. It's an app you can download on your phone and computer and everywhere else. The link to it's in your show notes. We'd love to have you in there even tonight as we're watching the football game and talking about it all together. So special episode today, a little crossover between Locked on Tar Heels and Locked on Wolfpack. The guys that are the hosts of Locked on Wolfpack join me here in just a second. Let's get right to it. What's up, Wolfpack fans? What's up, Tar Heels fans? Welcome to this special Locked On crossover episode. UNC coming into Raleigh, primetime showdown, 8 p.m. in Carter Finley, ACC Network. The Tar Heels are favored by two and a half. We're going to start this first half of the show. We're going to put Isaac on the hot seat. Kent and I will be throwing questions to be fielded for UNC. We'll later switch seats in the second half, and we will go from there. So without further ado, Isaac. We know the big names, we know the stats, we know the numbers this UNC offense has been putting up all year. From a Tar Heel perspective, what are some of the things that Carolina absolutely must do tonight in order to continue putting points on the board? Well, it's got to be able to have complementary football. And that that was the big issue last year is the, the running game just could not help Drake May and the receivers and Josh Downs and the tight ends and everybody. And now with the emergence of Omarion Hampton this year, it's really completely changed how Carolina has been able to diversify that offense. The problem has been this season when Carolina gets away from that. I mean, last week against Clemson, Omarion Hampton, the number two rusher in the nation, doesn't even get 20 carries. Uh, there have been other games this year, the loss to Virginia, where Carolina went away from him late for some reason when it's still working. And so uh, you've got a new offensive coordinator this year in Chip Lindsey, and they're still kind of figuring some of those things out. But in order for Drake May to be able to do what Drake May does, spreading the ball around, making good decisions, they have to be able to um, get Hampton enough carries to to keep the, the Wolfpack defense at bay a little bit. And that's all you can do is a little bit because, uh, you know, NC State's going to win some of that on defense. Carolina's going to win some on offense. But that's what Carolina's trying to do is just get enough of those offensive wins to overcome that. Well, let me ask you this. The offensive line in North Carolina has been much maligned. And I don't know if it's rightfully so. I've watched many of their games. I've said "Eh, they've had ups. They've had downs. I think they've been wildly inconsistent. But when they're good, they look pretty good, but when they're bad, it can get ugly. Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you that the North Carolina offensive line can hold up well enough to win this game? Ken, i got to figure out how to count first. Hang on here. Okay. Um, All right. Well, <laughs> we got five on the left, five on the right. Add them together. We're going to get to 10, baby. We're going to get there. No, uh, I would go with a seven on that because they've been able to do enough to get Hampton the lanes he needs. Um, Carolina has a stable of tight ends who are able to help out in the blocking game. Bryson Nesbitt is the key one from a skill position tight end, but really it's John Copenhaver and Kamari Morales from like more of a blocking tight end scenario. Um, So those guys being able to help and chip when they need to is good. But um, I mean, my man, Ken, you're a DT. You know uh, what you're looking at and what you see and being able to lick your chops sometimes and come after it and try to get Drake May on his butt. And I think that that has been... The issue, but there have been enough times where they've been able to hold well enough that I'm going to be able to give it a seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I I like that answer. I like that. We everybody knows about the offense. The offense is the strength of this team, but the defense has been the Achilles heel, the one part of the golden calf that was not dipped in in you know the uh, immortality juice. So, what are you looking at in terms of this defense that you're like, hey, 
This is the part that concerns me the most, and this is the part where I'm like, eh, we're good. We'll, we'll be all right here. What's interesting is I think this is the side of the ball that will determine the game. Because like I said just a second ago, I think the state defense against the Carolina offense is probably going to be pretty even, right? Both, both sides are going to have some wins and some losses in that. I think um, what's been interesting about Carolina in the back half of this season and where they've struggled is like first couple quarters or so, things are looking good. They'll, they'll have a lead. And then something happens in the fourth quarter where um, teams are picking up tempo, not allowing Carolina to sub in the way they want to get that depth on the line going. And that's where the issues have been. And so if Carolina is going to be able to win this game, they've got to be able to figure out how to not have that fourth quarter letdown that they've had multiple times this season in, in these losses. And so Kenton, that's what I'm really watching for is not even necessarily what happens in the first 45 minutes of the game, but how can the defense, and in particular, stopping the run in the fourth quarter, that's what I'm going to be watching for in a big way. Which parts of this Carolina defense do you think may struggle the most with this NC State offense? That's a great question, Grayson. I, like the, the key up front is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Cayman Rucker, who is just this mm. relentless undersized DN, but who has like, you know, top five quarterback hurries in the nation all season long. Um, and, and Carolina's strength in the, on the defensive side of the football, uh, both last season and this size, season, has been the linebacking core of Cedric Gray and Power Eccles. That's not where I'm ever worried. It's what's in front of and behind those guys that sometimes concerns me more. And so uh, the, the thing that would concern me most is interior defense and then the, the secondary, being able to do uh, what they do. There's just every now and again, you get somebody out of position or you get somebody burnt deep. And so um, I, I'm really watching, can you stop the run inside? And can, can you stop big chunk plays from happening on the outside, on, on the perimeter downfield? So last year's game, we saw a situation Ooh. where, I mean, many folks knew if it's a track meet on grass, congratulations, Carolina's going to run away with this thing by a mile. But if NC State can make it ugly, mucky, and nasty, North Carolina will not want to get in the playpen with them, which that turned out to be the case. What is the type of game that North Carolina is looking for this year? Is it the exact same as last year? Or are you like, eh, I don't know. They're a little bit more prepared to get in the mud. They got the rain boots. They got the, the little dicky fit on. They're ready to get in the mud with you and get to wrestling a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. I think it's the, the latter of those rather than the former because the problem with – you call this a problem. You'll, you'll hear me in just a second. But like with Drake May, you've got this quick strike capability. But when the weakness is your defense, it's like, gosh, we got to let our guys rest a little longer. We can't be having such. And, and you want to have that quick strike capability, but you got to be able to lengthen these offensive drives. And that's where Omarion Hampton is so important. That's where his backup British Brooks is so important is being able to have drives that are a little more, uh, a little longer sustained. Um, to be able to muck it up a little bit, to get in the mud a little bit and put your hunter boots on and get after it. And so uh, that that's what Carolina is going to have to do um, to try to tire out Peyton Wilson in this defense and, and, uh, and win things on that side of it. This rivalry has provided several unforgettable plays over the years, making some legends at respective schools. Now, this might be an obvious answer, but we're going to see where you fall on this one. <laughs> Give us the Tar Heel that you would think is most likely to become a hero in this one. Ooh, that's a great question, Grayson. I, I feel like I don't want to give the obvious answer. You know, it's like we want to want to give something something else. Um, I I really think I'm going to have to say Hampton, Omarion Hampton, the running back, because uh, again, if Carolina is going to win, it's going to be because he has a massive day. Uh, let's go back to Clemson last week. Clemson allows like 108 rushing yards a game. Pretty commensurate, actually, with what the Wolfpack allows on the ground. Homie had like 178 rushing yards. And so that's what you're looking at. Like, if Carolina is going to end this two-game winning streak of the Wolfpack, which have been electric games, by the way, fellas. I don't know about y'all, but they've been heart-pounding. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, my goodness, we're sweating. We're heart-pounding. Um, if, if Carolina is going to have a hero in this game, you, you almost expect Drake May to do what he does or hope that he can and, and the Wolfpack not uh, be able to hold him down again. But it's going to take a special effort. I'm going to say 150 plus rushing yards from Amarion Hampton. Okay. And then last question here. I'll make it a quick one. 
We heard earlier this week from Kamon Rucker that they felt a little bit disrespected from the flag planting by NC State this past year. How do you think they will take that into this game? Man, here's the deal. I I, I hope they don't even think about it, frankly. Like, I think, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think those things are are nice and it's like good media fodder. But I think ultimately it's like, dude, like you should have motivation enough just by the fact that you have lost a close game each of the past two years. You should have motivation enough just by the fact that you had that four game losing streak to end last year and have lost, you know, what, like two and two and three or four down the stretch here. Uh, I, I think that's the critical thing. Um, and so, you know, like flag planning, bulletin board material, any of that, <laughs> who cares? Go beat the dude in front of you and win a football game. I think that's what ultimately needs to be going through the heads at the end of the day. And Ken, I mean, you tell me, is that like, what would you be feeling in your locker room with something like that? I mean, me personally, I was a guy that every single game I approached it in the exact same way. I, I got money in the way. I got food on the table and I hate everybody in front of me. I hate yeah. all of you. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. There was a little extra hate from, for the boys in baby blue because how everybody, you know, got you lathered up for that game. You know, it, Nobody is coming up to you during the week, uh, during the ECU game. Hey, you got to destroy the Pirates, man. This is the game. Nobody's coming up to you. The Clemson week, hey, man, this is the week. But, but you know, when it's time to play the boys in baby blue, everybody on campus, they, even if you ain't never played a snap in your life, you're a walk-on on the football team. You're here. Hey, this is the game. This is the game. Go out there and get us one now. So, you know, it, it's – I really don't I'm, – I'm one of those people that, like you said, if you need to be pumped or primed, to go get a 10-win season potentially, to beat your crosstown rivals, to win in this rivalry that means so much, I I don't want you next to me, to be honest, if we got a bumper problem. I just don't want you out there with me. In just a moment here, we're going to switch chairs, and Isaac will be handling the questions for NC State after a quick word here from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of this crossover episode is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy but it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, folks. I'm going to settle into the captain's chair now and fire away at Kenton and Grayson and see what we got going. Guys, uh, what's been interesting to me about the, our two teams this season is we've arrived at identical records from two completely different places. For Carolina, started off 6-0 and and are now 8-3. and For NC State, you know, kind of, was it 4-3 and out of the gate? And then like a four-game winning streak at this point. And so what has kind of flipped things in these last several games to get NC State to this point? Well, I'd say we've established an offensive identity. Hmm. Even in the games that we lost early, it wasn't the problem of the defense, right? You look at the uh, Notre Dame game, and yeah, you see 45 points, but when you consider how many of those points came from, um, our our offense turned the ball over in really horrible situations. Same thing with the Marshall game, which ended up being a win, but if you look at that score, it's inflated by a pick six because a receiver just didn't want to block on a bubble screen and, and things along those lines. So the defense has always been there. Uh, the Louisville game, same thing. You give up 13 points, you're supposed to win that ball game, unless you're the University of Iowa, and then it's a different situation. But you're supposed to win the ball game when you give up 13 points, and yet we could not. But now it, there was a – or let me say this. There was a discombobulated kind of way about the offense. There was no who's the guy. There was no, um, hey, this is who we are as an offense. This is what we do as a team. There was none of that. Now, Coach 2 J. You got him rolling, brother. It started with the Wake Forest game and went forward from there. I'll tell you, this group here has, has absolutely done fantastic things in the running game and saying, you know what? We'll be physical with you. We're going to get in your face. We're going to make it real tough and difficult because we're just going to lean on you. 
from the start of the game to the end. We'll we'll see. You you might stop us once or twice here in the first quarter. But by the time the fourth quarter comes, you're gonna be real tired of Big Belt and leaning on you. You're gonna be real tired of Dylan McMahon leaning on you. And that's what we've been counting on. That's what's led to success. Going back to this Duke game that we had in the middle of the season, suffered an embarrassing loss on the road in Durham. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, as also many Tar Heel fans know, we've had not one but two quarterback changes. We started with Brennan Armstrong, didn't go the way we wanted it to, flipped over to sophomore MJ Morris. He played four games, decided that he would shut it back down in red shirt for the remainder of the season. Now we're back with Brennan Armstrong and we're still <laughs> winning. But this Duke game, the, the embarrassing loss we suffered, after that game, you heard linebacker Peyton Wilson say, this team needs to get tougher. And I tell you what, since that moment, they have been tougher. Something changed in that locker room after that loss in Durham because they look like a completely different team. It's almost felt like two different seasons, if you will, after that Duke loss. And so they're playing inspired football, both offensively and defensively. And we're, we're we feel very blessed to be having the same record actually as Carolina at this point in the year. Yeah, man, it's great. Let, let's talk about that wild ride at quarterback because that's exactly where I wanted to go next. We've had Armstrong back under center for the last two games, the wins at Wake and Virginia Tech. Is he doing things differently than he was doing earlier in the season that have kind of turned things, or is it just the team was rolling and you just insert him in and you feel better about it? I say that this is more so a situation where we have personnel sorted out a lot better than we did in the beginning of the season. In the beginning of the season, folks were hesitant to go to Kevin Concepcion, even though he's been phenomenal all year. Yeah. yeah. But he was not the guy yet. And they were trying to feel their way through the dark. All right, who's the guy? Who's the guy? What's going on? Doing my best Ray Charles impression to find the guy. And now we have him. We know, okay, he's a big time playmaker. Not only him, there were multiple times during the season where if you're if you were a listener of Lock on Wolfpack or anything along those lines, you know Grace and I banged the table repeatedly. Please get the tight ends involved. We're begging you get the tight ends involved. Get the tight ends involved. And yet we see every game where Trent Penix has a touchdown catch, the Wolfpack win the game every mm -hmm. single time. And so it's it's about basically going to the guys who are getting things done, shortening up multiple rotations. And also letting Brennan know you don't have to you don't have to be the quarterback that we win because of. You can be the guy that we win with, and it's still a win. Because if you become the guy that we have to win in spite of, we will lose those ball games Good. because that, that, we just don't have that type of firepower offensively. So I think that those are the biggest things in terms of of the the whole quarterback situation and all that, and whether or not he was like a guy that he came in and elevated the offense, or the offense elevated him. I think it's a blend of. You know, the offense figured out who they were. He figured out who he needs to be, and everybody figured out what they need to do together. Um, Grayson, let me go to you on this one. Peyton Wilson, what, I mean, just what an incredible career this dude has had. We get now to senior night, his final home game. Uh, what what are you expecting out of him, and what is this man's legacy for NC State? Well, I'm expecting the exact same of what we've seen from him all season long. And it's just being an absolute beast at mm -hmm. any and all times. If there's a football to be chased after, he's going to be the first one to meet you there in the hole. He is having an unbelievable year. He's up for several awards, all of which I do believe he should win because his stats blow every single other player out of the water. But Peyton Wilson, what he has meant to this school and a little bit more in this game particularly, because he was a UNC commit before he flipped to NC right. State. That's right. But him being a six-year guy, he's been in this program, did NC State a massive solid in coming back to play this year. He's dealt with several injuries, missed a whole lot of games, dealt with several different offensive and defensive changes, the personnel, and he's been here through it all. And to have the season that he is having, I do believe, Kent and I both believe, he has cemented himself as a ring of honor type player wow. here in Raleigh. He wow. deserves his name up in the rafters or up on the facade. His number should be retired, even though we don't really retire them. We honor them, I guess you should say. He has been an elite linebacker this year, one of the best defensive players in the country at any position. And it will be impossible. It's impossible now to think about a world without him in the coming years because that has that is how special of a player he has been for the Wolfpack. Kent, let me ask you, because as a defensive tackle, what's it like to have a dude like this behind you? I mean, here's the thing. The, the biggest thing about football is 
you are always it's it's a math equation okay people don't realize this but game changers are really just numbers changers right mm -hmm. so what does that mean if you have to double a defensive lineman you now have to add in an extra body which means somebody else should be free and what you're counting on is that player that's coming free isn't as good with a guy like peyton wilson Oh, that's your dream as a defensive tackle. Let me tell you why. They can't stick on you for double and triple teams. Even in the 335, they can't stick on you because they're thinking, well, wait a minute. We got to climb to 11. Where's 11? We got to identify 11. Oh, there he is. Okay, we're going to get to him. And I'm just like, yeah, don't pay attention to little old 96. I'm not doing anything over here. Oh, yeah, tackle for loss. Boom. Exactly. That's that's exactly how it goes. A little Assassin Creed, flip the hood up and get to, get busy. But yeah, that's that's the reality of what you're looking at. I mean, a, a guy like Peyton Wilson, like like Grayson said, just past Bill Cowher all time in terms of uh, total tackles. He's, I believe, he's going to end up in the top four, potentially top three yeah. of all time in NC State history. And and the reality is, Peyton Wilson is a guy that I mean, he gets it done in a multitude of ways, and he, to in my opinion, he's one arm punt away from being in a Heisman conversation. And I mean that very genuinely, because if if that play doesn't happen against Louisville and we potentially go on to win that game, we'd be in the conference championship, which then elevates this program into a different conversation and, and view nationally to where you're looking around and you're saying, wait a minute, this guy's killing everybody in the nation in tackles and he's got a couple picks and he's got a pick six and he's got some forced fumbles and he's got a two fumble recovery. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, He's he's just phenomenal. We can't I mean, we can't say enough about the guy. He's just yeah. fantastic, man. You love a career. And he's just one of those players that you as an opponent have to have a begrudging respect for because of how he plays the game and how dominant he is in it. And it's just it just makes this game fun to watch dudes like him bring it game in and game out. Guys, I got to ask you the same question you asked me. I know we need to move on. But uh, if there's a guy that's a hero for the Wolf Pack that cements a three-peat in this series, who's it going to be? Grown-ass man, Brennan Armstrong. <laughs> if he shows up and plays like, like, if he plays like his hair is on fire, but with a controlled rage, with a, I'm making my reads, I'm doing what I got to do, but I'm playing tough as nails. I'm talking to Max Duggan in the uh, Big 12 Championship last year type of performance. <laughs> I'm talking to a Brett Favre after his father passed. I prefer. I'm talking that, you know, a lot of people were talking about him holding his ribs at the end of the last game. If he goes out and wins this football game, little Ben Finley is already, you know, he's now a cow and we still love him. He's going to come back to the ACC. Congratulations, Ben. We'll see you soon, buddy. We'll see you soon. But <laughs> if, if Brennan Armstrong goes on to lead this team in terms of half of this turnaround, being his and the the last what would it be three four games be three, wins yeah. produced by him including a win over uh unc when they have potentially the best quarterback in school history that to me is a moment not only the best quarterback in school history a running back that's top five in the nation in rushing a receiver that the governor, the uh, the attorney general, my grandmother, somebody's cousin, all wrote letters for to say he needs to play. He needs to play right now. If you can, if you can pull off the win as Brennan, it doesn't matter how you do it. You can pull a Peyton Manning in his last Super Bowl, where you get the participation trophy, where you just you just got the guy at the wheel, not doing much. If the Wolfpack walk away with a win, Brennan Armstrong would never have to buy another beer in Raleigh for as long as he lives. I Kenton took my answer, so I'll give you another one. But Okay, I was going to make you say, if it ain't Brennan, who is it? No, I will give you another one. However, if Brennan wins this game, he will be a Wolfpack legend in that sense where the, the way the season looked at the midpoint and to where we are now, if he were to beat Carolina and get to nine wins, he's a Wolfpack legend forever. But I'll give you a different answer. I'm going to go with KC Concepcion. Now, yep. he has been essentially our only shining star on offense all season long. And we've been sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop in that you, you would expect a team to completely take him out of a game. We keep finding ways to get the ball into his hands and then he does the rest. And so I think it'll be another case here. If we can continually get the ball into his hands, he makes magic happen from there. And so I think if we're able to get it to him consistently, he should be able to knife through this UNC defense and make a massive difference. 
Okay, you've heard the story from both sides of the field. It's now time to figure out, can NC State get to a three straight win streak? Can Carolina end that and start their own? Can Which team's going to keep the hopes alive of a double-digit win season? We're going to make our predictions in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels and Locked on Wolfpack is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. College basketball season is now here. I know we're talking about football, but you're going to need some last-minute tickets to some incredible sporting action. In fact, the Wolfpack are playing in like 26 minutes as we record this against a good BYU team. I know some folks might need tickets to that game in half an hour, and you can do that on game time at a good price, and you're going to be able to see what the view looks like from your seat because that's what game time does in their app. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for any event you're looking for. Football, basketball, music, comedy, theater, you name it, they've got it. Take the guesswork out of buying these tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off at Game Time. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, folks, Grayson said it earlier. The FanDuel, our great sports betting partner, has the line on this game. Carolina minus two and a half, despite the fact that this game is in Raleigh. I was frankly a little bit surprised by that line, guys. But uh, that's where we're at here. So, Kenton, Grayson, we're going to make our predictions. Any final thoughts before we get there, though? I am. I'm looking at this game and I, you know, this is we know what this game is. This is a game where. If you go one and eleven, but this is the only game you win, the season wasn't a complete failure. You know, this is a this is a game where if you go eleven and one, and this is your one loss, there's still gonna be some folks talking at the office. Hey, look what we handed you, buddy. That's, right. That's how That's that right. thing went. So you know, I'm 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 always excited to see this thing. I'm always the the spirits are always high, the energy is always high, especially in the Carter night game, prime time, eight p.m. I can't wait. Let's get it rolling. <laughs> the state of North Carolina, this one means a lot That's to right. a lot of folks. And I know UNC fans will probably say, no, our rival is Duke. Nope. Nope. In football, nope. Nope. it's nope. NC State. Oh. That's right. That's right. In and football. Isaac agrees with me. That's how yeah. you know. In football, 100%. it is NC State. That's There's right. There's no love lost here. As Kenton mentioned, the environment you are going to see in Carter Finley tonight will be unbelievable. It will be an absolute madhouse. And you'll be able to tell – through your television screen, I guarantee you that. So this game is going to be insane. I love the fact, actually, that NC State is a home dog because they typically tend to pull out the most tricks and play a little bit harder when that is the case. But I am anxiously ready for this one. Yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat. Carolina, for them, it's like the hopes of ACC championship are gone. The hopes of a really good bowl game are gone. So you're just trying to kind of salvage like, can we have the respect of we beat Duke and we beat NC State this season? And so I think that's where it's at. And can we go into Carter Finley and like ruin Peyton Wilson senior night? Like it's that kind of thing that you're looking at. So all that said, dudes, let's make some predictions. Tar Heels minus two and a half. Grayson, what you going with? So a lot of Tar Heel fans may be surprised by this. I'm going to pick UNC to win this game and I'll tell you why. <laughs> After the Duke loss we started using reverse psychology that we would pick against NC State and see what happens. Since that Duke loss, we've picked against NC State every week. They're 4-0. I would be ashamed of myself if I changed <laughs> anything up and risked this game. I'm going to take UNC in this game. I do believe they have the capability to win this game. Of course, the offense has been unbelievable. If their defense can hold up just long enough, I think they can pull this out. This is very hard for me to say this honestly. UNC, I'm going to take them by a score of 30 to 24. Okay. Um, I think it'll be ugly. I think it'll be nasty. I think it'll be mucky. As Grayson said, we do our thing here, and it has led to winning. It's only weird when it doesn't work. That's right. And uh, I think, as Isaac mentioned earlier, they've got their hunter boots ready to get mucky this time. 14-17, boys and baby boys. Ooh. A low-scoring affair. I believe that would hit the under, folks, if we get that Kenton score. Uh, Carolina has been doing everything they can to get up to 30 every game this season except one. I believe they do it again. And, uh, you know, I'm not going reverse psychology. I'm just going to make it a clean sweep Tar Heels thing. But here's how it's going to happen. Noah Burnett was the GOAT, and I don't mean like Michael Jordan capital 
goat. I mean, like, goat. Because he missed that field goal last year that ended this game for the Tar Heels. He gets redemption this year. He kicks a game-winning field goal to break a tie. Carolina wins 34-31 and covers the spread by half a point. Guys, that's what I got for it. My thanks to Grayson and Kenton for joining me on today's show where we could break down and talk about both sides of this Carolina and NC State rivalry. Again, it's time to break this two-game losing streak. It's silly. We got to send Drake May out and in others that will be done after this out on a good note. Oh, man, can't wait to talk more after it's all said and done later on tonight. Hopefully, we will be talking about it in a happy way. Again, want to remind you, come join our Discord, or you can email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. We'd love for you to subscribe, smash the like button to let us know you're here, and leave your comments on your thoughts on this game tonight. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll be right back with you later on today to just quickly break down the game. But until then, peace.